Today I will give a brief demonstration of building a code words game using Flutterflow. Code words is just a fancy term that I have used for this famous game called code names, which some of you might be familiar with. For those of you who are not familiar with this game, let's have a quick look at the basics. To put it simply, it's a word guessing game. There would be two teams, red and blue, and each one of the team will have a spy master. The main role of the spy master is to give out clues. Once the team formation is done, players will be presented with a board of 25 words. 9 of these belong to the blue team and 8 belongs to the red. Blue has more words to guess because they get the first chance to start. The remaining ones are neutral, which doesn't belong to any of the teams. Now let's say you are the blue spy master. Then you have to give out a one word clue along with a number, which is the number of words that you think somehow relates to that clue. And keep in mind the clue has to be just a single word. And using this clue, your team has to guess the correct words that belong to your team. Being in blue team, if you guess any of the red team's word, then they get the points. Eventually, the winner of the game would be the team who guesses all the correct words first. Now that we have all the basics out of our way, let's have a look at the game in action. Here I have downloaded the project from Flutterflow and I ran it on this iOS simulator. This is the first screen of the game where you have to enter your name and then click get started. From this page you can either create a game or join a game that your friend might have already created. Let's try creating a new game. Just tapping on this create game button starts a new game and you can see you are the host of this game. Now you can share this joining code with friends so that they can join this game. But first let's choose a team. You can see there is join red team and join blue team button along with become a spy master button for each of the teams. Joining a team basically means you are a word guesser for the team and or in terms of the game they are called field operatives. If you want to give out clues then choose spy master. Keep in mind that there can be only one spy master per team. Now let's say your friend wants to join this game. Similarly he has to enter his name and tap get started. Then he has to select join game. Here he has to enter his joining code and click verify. This checks if the room exists and then tap join. Let's say Abel becomes a blue spy master. Now I will bring up one more device and sign in as a different player. Kathy joins the red team. I also have the app running using the run mode of Flutterflow. Let me bring it over to this screen. I will join as one more player here. And let's say Sophia becomes a red spy master. To give you a better view, I will just move this web view over to the other screen. You can see none of the players have a button to start the game, except the host. So first the host has to tab start game, then all the players will get the join game button to enter the game. Let me quickly join from all the devices. Okay, you can see the leftmost device has the spy master view where you can see which cards belong to which team. For the demonstration, I am keeping all the views side by side, but according to the rules of the game, the spy master view shouldn't be shown to any of the other players. Field operatives will just have the words without any color. The blue team starts first. First, the blue spy master Abel has to give out a clue. Let's say he gives out the clue as cold 2. So cold is a clue and 2 is the number of words the field operatives can guess. A blue field operative guesses penguin and antarctica. You will see the changes reflect on all the devices and spy master will also see a tick mark. After selecting the words, any one of the blue field operatives will have to press the end turn button. Notice the word left count also updated. Now let's say Red Spy Master also gives out a clue and the field operatives guesses two words correctly, but also guesses a wrong word. But as the wrong word is neutral, none of the teams will get the point. But the red team's turn has to end now. The game will go on in this fashion, but to give you a glimpse of what happens when a team wins, let me quickly select all the correct words of the blue team and end turn.
You can see on all devices the winner screen pops up. Actually this is not a separate screen, it is an overlay that appears on top of the game screen. Now that we have got a glimpse of the game in action, let's move on to Flutterflip project and have a quick look at how the game is built. This is the start screen of the game. Here we have a text field to take the user's name as an input. Then we have this get started button. Let's have a look at the actions that we have set on it. So first of all we are just creating a new account for the user and it is an anonymous account. Then we are just using the text field to take the user's name as an input and we are just updating the user document. Now let's have a look at the different pages that we have in this game. So after this get started button is pressed, the user is navigated to this create join screen. And apart from this page, we have this joining pages, which are the host page and the player page. Then we have the game pages, their field operatives view and the spy view. This celebrate pages are, we are not actually using them. We will be showing the celebration pages as an overlay on top of these two game pages. So let me just collapse this folder. Okay, now let's have a look at this create join screen. Here the user's name is displayed on top. Then there are two buttons. One is this create game and another one is the join game. Let's have a look at the actions that we have set on this create game button. Okay, the first action that we have here is to create a new document inside the room collection and here we are setting the values for two fields. So on this code field we are setting the value from a custom function which is called generate room code. This generate room code function actually generates a four digit integer number and we are using it as a room code. And inside this host field we are actually storing the user id of the user who creates a new game. Then we have a, another backend call action which creates another document inside the player collection. So inside the player's collection we are storing the user's name. We are setting the is team selected to false. And we are storing the user's UID which is the user ID. Then we are finally navigating to the host page and we are passing the room details over to this page. This host page and the player page are quite similar. If a user creates a new game, then the user is navigated to the host page. Otherwise, if anyone joins the game, then he or she is navigated to this player page. Now let's have a look at this host page. So here the user name and the joining code is displayed. Then we have these four buttons. These are for selecting the team. Now let's have a look at the actions that we have set on this join red team button. So here we have just a single action which updates the player document and we are setting the values of these three fields. So as is a red team button, so we are setting the is blue value to false. And this just joins the player as a field operative and not as a spy master. So we are storing the is spy master value to false as well. And finally the is team selected value is set to true. Similarly these four buttons are set for the join blue team button, if we have a look at this action, we will see that is blue is set to true here. And for the spy master, the is spy master would be set to true. Now let's have a look at the column that is present below this blue team text. And one thing to keep in mind, I won't go into the details of all the components that are present on this page. I will share the project link with you and you can have a look at all the components at your own pace. So we have a backend query set on this column and here we are actually using the players collection to get the documents and we have two filters over here. We are checking if the is team selected is true and the second one that we are checking for whether the team is blue or not. Then if these filters are true then we are displaying the users below this blue team. And similarly for the red team we will be checking if the is blue team value is false or not and we will be displaying the players over here. Finally we have the start game button on this page but before taking a look at it let's have a look at the firestore collections that we have here. Okay so we have actually two collection, main collections that is the users 
which just has the default fields that are generated by flutter flu and then we had this room collection along with a sub collection called players so these are the fields that are inside the room collection and the player collection has these fields and we also have some local state variables words and is verify pressed so words actually stores a list of strings we will have a look at it next where we stored the words in this variable okay so now let's get back to the start game button and let's have a look at the actions over here so the first one is a custom action which is called init words so let's have a look at it here we are basically storing all the words inside the words local state variable okay so next one is also a custom action which is called generate board words so in this I am actually taking the list of words and I am formatting it in a particular fashion so that the word is actually stored along with the color of the tile and it also stores whether the word is guessed or not. And I am again returning this new list of words as this unique words. Then I have a backend call to update the document. And here I am updating the room details document and I am storing the words first then I am setting some of the booleans and initially the red words left is set to 8 and the blue words left is set to 9 okay then there's a condition to check if uh, it's a spy master or not if it's a spy master then it's navigating to the spy view otherwise it's navigating to the field operatives view okay so now let's have a look at this field operatives view and the spy view let's resize this screen so that everything fits properly okay so first of all you can see the words left are displayed over here then we have the player's name along with the team to which the player belongs to and we have some conditional visibility set on each of these so if we have a look at this blue team text and have a look at this conditional visibility so this will only be shown if the is blue is set to true and this would be shown when the is blue is set to false okay now have let's have a look at the widgets on this page so as this is a field operative view initially all the tiles would be white in color so we have this white container and we have set the visibility according to a custom function again and this custom function is actually taking a is guest string and let's have a look at this function so this is basically checking if the field is guest or not if the field is guest then a particular color would be displayed over here instead of white now you can see here that there are some other containers which are blue red and neutral so if a word is guessed and it belongs to the blue team then this blue container would be displayed if it belongs to a red team then this red container would be displayed and if it doesn't belong to any team then this neutral container would be displayed and we have a con conditional visibility on each of these so let's have a look at one of these this is for neutral visibility so this takes the color and is guessed string and it returns true or false based on that and the conditional visibility uses this to determine whether to show this container or not now let's have a look at the action set on this red enter button so first of all we are again using a custom action to calculate the words left then we have the second custom action as declare winner this actually checks whether all all the words are guessed and which team has guessed all the words and it returns a string according to that so we are now checking if the winner is red or not so if the string is r then the winner is the red team and if the winner is the red team then we are updating the backend call according to that if the red team is not the winner then we are checking again if blue is the winner if blue is the winner then we are 
again setting a backend call to update the document otherwise we are also setting a backend call but here we can see that is blue winner is set to true and here no winner is set okay let's now go back and after this page let's have a look at the spy view page the spy view page is very similar to the field operatives view just here instead of the white containers all the colored containers would be displayed and again all of them has conditional visibility and we have a check mark over here so if this check mark is shown then that means the word is guessed then i can show one more thing so there's a red winner view and the blue winner view and each of them have a conditional visibility so if the is red winner value is true then this red winner view is shown let me just enable this in the ui so this is the view that is shown if the red team is the winner let me hide it again now similarly this blue winner view is shown when the is blue winner value is true so let me enable this in the ui and this is how it looks when the blue team is the winner okay so this completes most of that part of this demo and i try to show most of the components that i have used on the different pages and how each of the actions are configured and you can have a deeper dive into this project i will have this project link in the description of this video and you will also find a link on the hackathon page hope you guys enjoyed the video and happy hacking